Electron configuration. Here we have the structure of an atom. At the center we have the nucleus and around it we have the shells. Shells are fixed energy levels where electrons orbit the nucleus. The shells that are further away have more energy. Now we've come to know that shells are not just basic areas. They're broken down into smaller rings called subshells. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the structure of shells and looking at how electrons are organized in an atom. And by the end of it, you should be an expert at electron configuration. Now a shell is broken down into subshells, just like a town is compromised of many roads. Now we have four types of subshells, S, P, D, and F. So we can think of our town as having four types of roads. So in this diagram on the left, we have the first four shells around the nucleus. As we can see, the higher we go, the more energy a particular shell has. Starting with the first shell, the first shell is quite small. So it only has one subshell, the S subshell. The second shell is broken down into an S and a P subshell. The third shell can hold more electrons, so we have an S, a P, and a D subshell. And finally, the fourth shell, because it's the largest out of these four, can hold up to four subshells, S, P, D, and F. Now there's something about the position of these two in particular, but we'll come back to that later. For now, just remember that shells are broken down into subshells, and depending on how many electrons a particular shell can hold, it will have that many subshells. So that means larger shells can hold more subshells. Just like a big town has more roads. Okay, so we use the analogy that a shell is like a town and subshells are like the roads of a town. However, atoms are organized even further than this. Subshells are broken down into orbitals, just like roads are compromised of houses. Now people are found inside houses, just like electrons are found inside orbitals. So orbitals are usually represented by a square, and those two lines represent electrons. Notice that one orbital can hold up to two electrons, and when you draw them, you have to make sure that you're pointing them in opposite directions. This is because electrons are negative and repel each other. Okay, so the next step to electron configuration is to work out how many electrons are in a shell. Now we might have an idea about this from GCSEs. However, get ready because your whole idea of an atom is about to get changed. We use this formula to work out number of electrons, 2 n squared. The n represents the shell number. Another word for the shell number is the principal quantum number. So if you see that word, don't worry, all it means is shell number. Okay, so when n equals 1, so in the first shell, we're going to have 2 times 1 squared, which is 2 electrons. Okay, so the first shell holds 2 electrons. Moving on, when n equals 2, in the second shell, we're going to have 2 times 2 squared, which gives us 8 electrons. Here's where things get a bit different. When n equals 3, we're going to have 2 times 3 squared, which is 18 electrons. And finally, when n equals 4, we have 2 times 4 squared, which is equal to 32 electrons. So we can see that as the shells get further away from the nucleus, they can hold more electrons. Remember that these shells are broken down into subshells, which are then broken down into orbitals. Now the subshells are not all the same size. The S subshell is the smallest. It can hold only one orbital. The P subshell can hold three orbitals. The D subshell can hold five orbitals. And the F subshell holds seven orbitals. Now, how many electrons can each subshell hold? Since we know that there are two electrons in one orbital, that means the S subshell can hold up to two electrons. The P subshell, six electrons. 10 in the D subshell, and up to 14 electrons in the F subshell. So, if we go back to this picture, 
we can now include the orbitals. It's going to look something like this. Two electrons in the first shell, because it only has an S subshell. In the second shell, we're going to have eight electrons, 2s and 6p. In the third shell, we're going to have 18 electrons, two from S, six from P, and 10 from D. And in the fourth shell, we're going to have 32 electrons. Okay, so now we have a general understanding of shells, subshells, and orbitals. Let's get to the main part, electron configuration. Now sodium has 11 electrons, and we know that a sodium atom has two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and one in the third shell. Up to now, we've represented electron configuration like the one below, 2, 8, 1. However, now we're going to start adding subshells. So let's write the same configuration of sodium, but including the subshells. The first thing we're going to do is write number one. This represents the first shell. In the first shell, we're going to open up an S subshell. And since we need two electrons, we're going to put two there because that's the maximum an S subshell can hold. So this represents the two electrons in the first shell. Now we're going to move to the second shell. Again, we're going to start with an S subshell and we're going to put two electrons in there. However, we need to put eight electrons in the second shell. So far we have two. That means in the second shell, we're also going to have a P subshell and we're going to fill this up with six electrons. In total now, we have eight electrons in the second shell. So we're going to move on to the third shell. Again, we're going to start with an S subshell, and this time you only need one electron. And that's the last electron on the final shell. So that's how we represent electron configuration in A-levels. Let's try another example now. By the way, I was going to say a good chemistry joke, but all the good ones are gone. Argon has 18 electrons, which are arranged as 2, 8, 8. So it's arranged like the following. Let's show argon's electron configuration using subshells. So in the first shell, we're going to open up an S subshell and put two electrons. We finished the first shell. Now we're going to move to the second shell. We need to have eight electrons here. So first, we're going to open up another S subshell, put two electrons. Then again, in the second shell, we're going to have a P subshell with six electrons. Now we have eight. Moving on to the third shell. In the third shell, again, we're going to start with an S subshell and put two electrons. However, we need to have eight. So again, in the third shell, we're going to have a P subshell and put six electrons. And that gives us eight. Okay, so here's something important about the periodic table. We can break the periodic table into four parts. Over here, we have the S block. These elements make the P block. Over here, we have the D block. And here we have the F block. Now notice something interesting. In the S block, we have two elements next to each other. This represents the two electrons in the S subshell. The P block has six elements next to each other. And we know that we can fit six electrons in the P subshell. The D has 10 and F has 14. So we're going to use this to help us do the electronic configuration for any element. Now for the purposes of electron configuration, we're going to say that hydrogen and helium are both S block elements. Of course, we know that helium is a noble gas and it's in group zero. So to do our little trick, we're just going to focus on this part of the periodic table because 90% of questions just involve this section over here. Over here, we have the one S subshell. One, because it's the first shell and S because it's an S block element. Over here, we have the 2s subshell, because now we're in the second shell and we're in the s block. V6 have electrons in the 2p subshell, second shell and p block. Now we're in the 3s subshell. Over here, 
we have the 3P subshell. Here we have the 4S subshell, and here's where things get interesting. Right now, we're in a D subshell, and this is the first time we're inside the D subshell. So, who does this D belong to? Is it a 3D or a 4D subshell? Let's have a look. We've already got the 3S and a 3P, which means we're missing a 3D. As for the 4, we have a 4S, however, we haven't got to 4P yet. That means this D subshell is going to have to be a 3D subshell. And here's why. If we go back to our diagram of energy levels and orbitals, we said that as you go up, the energy levels increase. And this is true for the most part. However, it actually looks something like this. Focusing on here, we can see that we have 3P, and then just above it, we have the 4S subshell, and then the 3D subshell. So this tells us that the 4S subshell actually has lower energy than the 3D subshell, which is why it came first. And it's always this case. 5S will have lower energy than 4D. And I'll show you what I mean now. Okay, so now over here we have the 4P subshell. Moving on, we are in the 5S subshell. Back to a D. But this time, we can't call this 5D. This is going to be the 4D subshell. Because remember, whenever you get to the D subshell, it's one number lower. And what's this one called? 5P. Perfect. Now, to fully write down the electron configuration, we also have to put number of electrons above each subshell. So that means on top of every S, we have to put two electrons. So all the S subshells have two electrons. On top of P, we have to put six electrons. And D subshells can hold up to 10 electrons. Now we're going to talk about how to work out an element that's in the middle of the periodic table. Let's say sulfur. So, to work out sulfur's electron configuration, all we have to do is see how many completed subshells we've done until we got to sulfur. For example, starting from hydrogen, we've completed the 1s2 subshell. Then we move on to the second shell. We've completed the 2s2. And we've also done the 2p6. We've also done the 3s2. And now, we're in the 3p subshell. However, sulfur only has four electrons in the 3p subshell. So we're going to write 3p4. Let's try another element, for example, calcium. Why don't you try to pause the video and write down the electron configuration for calcium by yourself. And then once you're ready, you can check your answer. Okay, and this is the electron configuration for calcium. Well done if you got it right. And don't worry if you haven't, we're going to do one final example after this. However, we notice that electron configurations can be quite long to write. 1s2, 2s2, all the way to 4s2. Fortunately for us, there's also a condensed way of writing this. And that involves using the noble gases as checkpoints. For example, for example, the most recent noble gas before calcium is argon. So we could say that calcium is argon plus a 4s2. All of this part is represented by argon. So then all we have to do is write the 4s2. Let's try something new. How about the electron configuration for a calcium 2 plus ion? So when it comes to writing the electron configuration of an ion, so the first thing we have to do is look at our shells then identify the highest shell number. In this case, the highest shell is the fourth shell. Since we have a two plus ion, we need to get rid of two electrons. So we're going to get rid of both electrons in the S subshell. That means the fourth shell is completely empty. So we can get rid of it and write the following. And again, if you want to write it as short form, below, we can get rid of the two over here and that just gives us argon. So basically, a calcium ion and an argon atom have the same electron configuration.
Let's do another example. See if you can write down the electron configuration for a vanadium atom. You can pause the video if you want to have a go. And this should be the answer for a vanadium atom. So we can see that this is quite long. If you want to condense it, we have to look at our most previous noble gas. Again, in this case, it's going to be argon. So vanadium is going to be argon, then 4s2 and 3d3. How about a vanadium 3 plus ion? So we need to remove three electrons. Our larger shell is going to be shell four. So we're going to remove two electrons from here. Next, we're going to have to look at the third shell. Now from the third shell, we're going to have to remove electrons from the highest energy level. And we know that out of S, P and D, D has the highest energy. So we're going to remove that final electron from over here. So that 3d3 becomes a 3d2. And this is the electron configuration. Or we could write it like this. Okay, so we've almost finished. There's only two more things we have to talk about and we smash this chapter. And that is chromium and copper. If I was to ask you, what is the electron configuration for chromium? You wouldn't be wrong if you said this. However, Unfortunately, chromium is not 4s2, 3d4. And here's the reason. So if we look at chromium's electrons in the 4s and 3d subshell, we know that it has two electrons in the 4s and four electrons in the 3d. However, chromium does something interesting. The 3d subshell has got four orbitals which have an electron and it's almost about to have five. So it needs one more electron so that all of its orbitals have an electron. So it borrows it from the 4s, leaving us with 4s1, 3d5. So you just have to memorize this and that's the explanation. Chromium likes to be like this because it's more stable this way. So only for chromium, you're going to have to do an exception and write down 4s1, 3d5 for the chromium atom. And the same goes for copper. You might think it's 4s2, 3d9. However, if we look at the orbitals, we have two and nine. So we can see that the 3d subshell is almost about to be complete. It just needs one more electron. So it borrows it from the 4s subshell. And that leaves us with 4s1, 3d10. So copper is 4s1, 3d10. As for the rest of them, the rules are the same. It's just chromium and copper that are exceptions. And that is the majority of electron configuration. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.